Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Ed. I think I may have to flip the page over here. This was a long one. Ed Stroh, K9EGS. Now, he uh, does POTA, or parks on the air. So he takes his vehicle and he goes out to a park. Uh, there are all different kinds of parks that are allowed for parks on the air, including local parks, national parks, state parks, all kinds of parks. Okay, And he sets up his station, a temporary station, in his car, which is a little HF radio operated on its own battery and a mag mount antenna for HF. I'm going to assume using a hamstick or something like that, which is a perfectly great way of doing it. Now, the little magnet that's used on the 19-inch whips, like what MFJ sells, are a little on the small side for a hamstick, which is uh, when extended about eight feet. And the lever arm on that in the wind will just pop that uh, magnet right off, so you need a bigger magnet. And the question that he has basically is how much bigger of a magnet? He says, when it comes to HF Mobile, mount it to the roof of the vehicle with a mag mount. Now again, we're not talking about a magnetic loop antenna. We're talking about an actual magnet that is used to attach the antenna and its mount to the roof of a car with a metal top which they all used to have, which not everyone has anymore. Uh, my Jeep, for example, has a plastic roof, but it has a very thick steel uh, roll cage. When it comes to HF mobile antennas, let's see. Does the size of the magnet make a difference in the antenna's performance? Not really. Let's look at something on the um, whiteboard. And while my assistant is getting ready, I would like to pay a special thank you to John Terry, who's a very recent patron. If you would like to be a patron, also you can go to the link that's at the bottom of this page. Okay, so he, he asks it here about different things. So we've got a car. Um, not a very good drawer. And on top of this is a steel roof. Steel roof to which you attach a magnet which has a little mount on it. And then there you attach your hamstick or whatever. And then the coax runs from this thing down inside the car where he has a radio, a battery microphone, whatever he's going to use. And this is an HF antenna, like a hamstick, which makes it very uh, compact. Now, where does the ground come in on this antenna? The ground comes in, let me use something a little more prominent, right here. The bottom of this mount under the rubber it's got some rubber on the bottom of it. But under that is a, a plate, like a plate of a large capacitor that covers the entire bottom of the mag mount. Okay? And that's attached to the uh, coax shield. And this then uses your car top and your car body, really, as a counterpoise for this antenna. Does it work? Works very well, actually. Now, you've probably got a little tuner down here to get this thing all tuned. But if you get the length just right on this ham stick, that's ham stick, which is a registered trademark, um, you can get similar items from MFJ, from DX Engineering, um, and so on. I just recently got some from DX Engineering for a recent video, which you will recall. Now, they make different kind of mag mounts. There's a kind from MFJ that's got three, like, six-inch magnets 
that have got a frame on top of them. And I can see how you get it up there, but I don't see how you get it off. Because to get it off, you have to lift this one off completely. So you can roll this way and get the others off. And that has the mount right in the middle of it. Note that something like this has a larger capacitor area underneath it than does a single one. Is that important? The answer is not really. Um, because if this works and you can get it tuned, you're probably doing it well. I would pick a hamstick that you can get off easily. Now, um, I would also mention that you want to clean the roof. Otherwise, this will grind dirt into the roof. Clean this, clean the bottom of it, put it down carefully. You put down one side first and then lean it over and it will snap into place with significant force. Okay, if you're wearing a, a, a mechanical watch, keep it away from that magnet because you could end up magnetizing the elements in your watch which would stop it from running. You have to go to a jeweler and get it demagnetized. Um, this will give you what you want. So for an antenna for a place like this, a big antenna on top of the car is not very prominent. If you set up an antenna near the car, like a buddy pole, okay, it's a lot more obvious that you're doing something than if you've just got this thing on the top of the car. So you've got a choice of hamsticks. You can also do like a screwdriver mount, uh, all different kinds of things that you can do to put an antenna up there. There are entire books written on going mobile. Now, um, Ed has one more question having to do with the radio itself. He wants to know if it would help if he would ground this to the chassis. Uh, the answer is for certain it will change everything. It will change the impedance of the antenna. You will have to retune it and everything. It may or may not give you better signals. I mean, ideally it would because you're now using the whole car body as uh, a counterpoise. And I'm saying counterpoise because nothing here is connected to ground. You're putting electricity into the car body, pulling it out. That's a capacitive effect, okay, a reactive effect. But it will work if you do that. Now, one thing to note when you do that, different parts of the car frame the car frame usually goes about like this. And if you ground it to the car frame, which underneath the car, here's your wheels. Okay, you've got the frame coming down like this. It's usually what they call an H frame. There's something like this. Okay, and if you go into the floor, you may or may not be hitting the actual frame. Okay, and the problem is that there's lots of steel pieces on here, and they're riveted and bolted and so on, and they may or may not have good electrical connection to the frame. So you can run into where you can get lots of static, actually, by connecting to the frame. And he's got a separate battery here. All right, or you could use the car battery, but that gets into the whole issue of getting the wires back here, fusing both of them, um, and making sure you don't run your battery down. So a separate battery is a good idea. All right, so um, there you go, uh, Ed. I hope this is of help to you. And there you have it. You can operate your car out there, and I commend you for activating the parks. A lot of those of us who are just chasers are very grateful to you. So with that being said, um, if you would like to help support this channel, use the link at the bottom of this page. And until we next meet, 73.